G'day legends, g'day superstars, Peps from Lace Out, and I'm here with Rampaging Tommy Roker, and we're giving you the mega trade update. Every single club, what they've done so far, what they're planning to do in the last couple of days before we head into the massive 2024 AFL draft. Some clubs are moving faster than others. It's rocker pace for some, snails pace for others, but more importantly, it's Chris Pepper. The great man, Tommy Roker, he is the guide. He is Yoda. He is the draft guru. And he's got all the inside word about every single club. So we're starting with the Adelaide Crows. Before we go into it, Tommy, how's everything been? How have you seen this trade period so far? Thanks, Peps. Well, this is the time of year that Suns fans love the most because um, we feel like we might actually have a bit of hope for the future. And this year, um, instead of fantasizing about which players we're going to get. We know exactly who we're going to get. And uh, and and our, our list manager has done a beautiful job of um, the voodoo of trading one pick and one player for all those points that are needed to to match the, the bids wherever they might come. So I've, I've um, for, for once, I'm looking at players who are going to go to other clubs and because oh, I already know the blokes who are coming to my club. That's yeah, awesome. How about yourself? Mate, I'm yeah. absolutely pumped. You know, being a Melbourne supporter, as you can see behind me, for many, many years, trade week was my grand final week. It was the year that I looked because we never used to play finals, but now we're continually making them and and losing them outside of 2021. So we're looking to obviously bolster our needs. You actually want to try and get into the finals for the first time, but there's also 16 other clubs moving and shaking, like I said, some faster than others. Um, and I really want to get your insight on a couple of them as well too. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, keep this quite simple. We're going to have a look at their, what, the, what the, the club itself, what they've got as a draft hand, uh, if they've brought anybody in, if they've obviously lost them, we're not going to get worried about who they've lost. It's more about who they've brought in um, and what Tommy thinks they're going to do for the rest of the week. And then we're going to be coming to be back again for our trade preview as well too. So we're kicking off with the Adelaide Crows, uh, or otherwise known as the Adelaide Nose, because I don't want to move Shane McAdam over to the Ds. Uh, apparently for a guy that hardly ever played a game this year, who's in his late 20s, he's a first rounder. Um, this is just a straight second rounder for, for him to move over to the Ds. I don't understand why they're making it so hard. Some clubs make it easy and, and the Crows, they just stick in the, sticks in the mud, I'd say, Tommy. Well, they, this is what they do. These clubs, uh, there's a few of them in Adelaide's the best at it. Um, they, they're just holding things up so they can get things their way. In the end, Peps, we, we all know that it's going to be something around the second round. And and for Adelaide, it might be maybe some future picks in there. Yep. Right now, Adelaide are pretty well situated. They've got picks 10, 14 and 20. Those picks will spread out as bids come in. And, and uh, we've got a, quite a few academy players and father-sons. So those picks aren't as good as they... You know, the, the first round's probably going to be about 28 picks. So those picks are going to be towards the latter end of the, the, the first round. So they might want to get another good pick and bundle a couple of those up and get further up or push it into the next year because they've got a father-son next year who's very, very highly rated by the name of Tyler Welsh. So that's another strategy that they, 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 they've got in the back. So a future second should see it done. I just, yeah, and like I said, they've also brought in Burgess as well too from the Gold Coast. I know that we're going to offer 10 and 40 and 20 for Petty. And we'll get down to that a little bit later on. And I, and I can understand why they're doing it. Yeah. You know what? If it was yeah. another year down the track with one year to go on the contract, Melbourne, I definitely would think about it. Personal but, stuff too, hey, Peps? Pardon? And he's got personal stuff too that might, he might want to go home. Yeah, but, but you know, well, who's, that's all, the, that's all the, the reporters saying all of this. Like, I haven't heard anybody out of the Melbourne camp say he's belting down the door to leave. Yeah. But this well, they've got, was, they've got a couple of days to go. Anything could happen as well. All yeah. right, Brisbane Lions have played in a grand final last uh, last year, last season. Their sort of draft hand is looking a bit thin. 30, 47, 51, 61, 67. They did bring in Tom Doty, which is I think is a pretty good recruit. He will have a bit of a delayed start to the season. With yeah, that, you, you wouldn't want to be relying on him to make your team better because he, he might not even play next year, really. I mean... These, these ACLs take a long time to really get to 100%. But maybe he comes along just in time to get some form for finals, and they'll probably be there again. So, yeah, good pick up. It is, but the, the interesting thing is, is that they, they dominated the draft last year with Ashcroft and Fletcher coming in. This year, they're a, a little bit thin on it. They've also, yeah. from, the, from a points perspective, they've got really nothing to play with at the moment, 1,408 points. They've got There's nothing that they can sort of... 
move towards or bid on because that's that's a low end bid at, at its finest. Well, I'll tell you what they'll do with that with that, mate. Um, they'll they'll give it to the Suns. They'll just give it to the Suns. The way that this works is that you have to go into the draft with the same number of picks as you have in senior list spots available. Okay. And that's so, been a change in the last number of years, hasn't it? Because three senior players and you're allowed to have a maximum of 38. Yep. Then they can only have five picks. Yep. So they want those five picks to be really high, but they can't use them. So they'll tr just before the first pick, in the hour before the first pick gets announced, Suns will be trading some of those picks back. Whether it's the Suns, you've got a couple of other clubs like Hawthorne and uh, who else has got a father son? Bulldogs. Yep. So, so, so teams in that that area they they want to trade picks into a certain area where it's they're just going to get sucked up, and the and the teams behind them. They want to get higher up the ladder so they can get a good player. Yeah. They they went to the ocean last year. They got their big fish in Dunkley. They got their two beautiful uh, draft picks, Father Sons uh, or, or Academy picks, etc. last year. So they're yeah. pretty much, I think, going to have, from, from your research, a, a pretty low-key remainder of the trade period and, and probably a pretty low-key draft period as well, too. Uh, there's another Ashcroft coming next year, so perhaps. Another Ashcroft. Uh, no, How many push. Ashcrofts are there, Tommy? You'd know. They came out of the Suns Academy, Pep, so I do know there's two of them. And Levi is a little bit different to his brother, and he's already been playing uh, rep footy at under-18s level as a 16-year-old. So he will be going to the Lions next year, probably in the first round. Interesting. Well, they've all come out of Marcus, Crap, Marcus Ashcroft anyway, so if we want to you know, really call it for what it is, uh, he's been doing Gold awesome. Gold Coast original. Yeah, Gold Coast original, three-time Three-time, three-time Premiership player. All right. A team that absolutely lit it up towards the back end of the season. They were magnificent. Saw them live. They beat my mob in a final by two points. Probably one of the biggest rules I've ever heard. It was the Carlton Blues. Now, they're a little bit interesting where the Blues are going. Uh, they've got 22, which was a compo pick for Mackay. They've got pick 26 and 70. So they don't really have much there. At the moment, they're sitting... 12th in the, in the in the points ranking at 1613 what are they doing because they seem to be slice and dicing a few players off the list but not bringing anybody in is this uh the clean yeah. out from the sauce era yeah mate sauce, sauce was sauce is what he is um you know he's a champion player and he and he's he's uh been hired by three clubs so far in various roles so they, they must trust him but um yeah, they're clean, they're cleaning out. They delisted a couple of um, a couple of guys from the SOS era and have traded out a couple of others. And, and Paddy Dow will go as well. Fish has gone. Uh, Plowman's finally retired after uh, SOS brought him from GWS. Uh, O'Brien gone, uh, delisted. So you know, we've got a lot of first round picks who were early first round picks and supposed to turn things around for Carlton. And uh, and Bossy's just said, "See you later." So um, they're looking at bringing in Elijah Holland, who I don't really know why, because um, Holland isn't getting games at the Suns because he's an inside midfielder. The Suns have heaps of them. And guess who else has heaps of inside midfielders? Carlton. Yeah. Mm. Definition so, of insanity, Tommy, uh, doing the same thing and trying to get a different result. We're going to talk about another club that's been doing that for years when it comes to midgets. But, yeah, I don't see the Blues doing much in the last couple of days. They're, look, they're, they're stocked. They were only, oh, what were they? A couple of kicks away from making a, a grand final, so they're they're in the they're in the right spot. Another year into the, into the boys, that's all that they can really ask for. They they they're not going anywhere. Yeah, Can't and they've got the Kemper Reale twins coming in next year's draft. That's so where they're probably they're saving things. spending the next, the points from next year. They'll have strategies around yep. that. Um, but they, they they've done okay to trade into the position they're at. Yep. Um, if they try for Hollands, then they're going to lose one, at least one of those, those second rounders, um, which is exactly what the Suns want. Yep. Um, so, you know, uh, the Suns seem to be coming up a lot, and that's because this is the Suns' trade period. Um, They've been in almost everything. You'd think it'd be 26, wouldn't you? They wouldn't give their first one, which is 22. For five well, I would even accept... Game. Even 70? Hollands and pick 38, Yep. pick 22. Just move up the order, yep. more picks, more points. Um, you don't. But it's not rocket science. They just need to match those points for those players. Teams are going to bid on them early, 
um, and, and there's four of them, not three like everyone reports. And the fourth one's going to come sometime late first, early second round. So, um, look, the, the Blues, um, they'll, they'll, they'll just look to try and consolidate. They've gotten rid of, by my account, four f- former first-round picks. Mm. Yeah. I'll put it this so, way. I've uh, always said this. Uh, if you get picked up, you can play footy. Well, they, they have that axiom that you you, you give the, the, the little blokes five minutes to prove that they're as good as you thought they were, and you give the big blokes five years to prove that they can even play. Yeah, I'm... I'm- <laughs> Don't know what Carlton are doing at the moment. I, look, I can see from a perspective of they're trying to get everything right for next year with the Camper Reale twins, but like I said, that's a lot of talent to go off the list. But if they're not getting, especially Paddy Dale, he wasn't too bad towards the back end of the year. I'd be surprised if he doesn't get picked up as a rookie or someone with. There's got to be. He's got to be better than at least one person out there in the comp. He's got to be better than one person on North list. You think? It's- Funny way things work, but yeah, if he can't, if he can't get there in the trade period, then um, he'll 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 probably just ask to be delisted. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't hear that he wants to stick around, and they're probably going to have a few salary cap issues. Um, as we know, this time of the year is when the reason that the trade period ends now is that the next thing the clubs and the AFL concentrate on is nutting out what the actual salary cap expenditure has been for the past year and what it's going to be for the next year. But the next year's number isn't locked in stone because, of course, you've got more more picks and trading and all the rest of it that's going on. But um, that's why you see more players delisted down the track. Yeah. The club sort of says, oh, geez, we're about, we're about 200 grand outside of where we wanted to be. Let's get rid of a couple of those young blokes who haven't played just much or them, haven't played at all. Up. And yep. then, we've, then we'll just have to work out the rest of our strategy when we go to the draft. Well, you know what? You want to talk about a club that's got their strategy down, Pat, Tommy. We're talking about the next one. They've just won a flag. They're going to go in pretty confident that they can go back-to-back, even though it is a very, very tough thing to do. And out of nowhere, they've been able to pry a absolute hard nut gun forward pocket. I would love to have at my club in terms of Lockie Schultz. Collingwood Magpies... Like, what can't they do? They've got two picks at the moment. They've got 19 and 39. They've got nothing in relation to points, 1,394 at this stage. I think from what your notes have said, they're just really consolidating their list. They've got more small forwards than uh, the Oompa Loompa uh, AFL team if they brought one in because they are stocked with them at the moment. Yep. They're just... They're just hoping to just roll through again and, and hopefully uh, get another flag under McRae. Well, you look at some of their better players and it's win now for them. Yep. Uh, Pendles, Sidey, Howe, your old mate, Jeremy Howe, who um, keeps on winning. If they still get the... He's the reason they stopped giving away cars, isn't it? Yeah, pretty but, much. Yeah, it was pretty much they, uh, they stopped giving him cars because, well, he just kept winning them. Simple exactly. Exactly. So, but um, they had a harsh purge, mate. Oh, gee, some of those young fellas, and I won't go through all the names, but a couple of the young fellas that they got rid of, they're worth the second look. Um, you've got, I mean, Taylor Adams was traded for a start. Uh, now, he wasn't part of their grand final side because of injury, but he was a big part of what got them there. Mm. So pretty harsh, but you bring in a, a, a small forward and, and they seem to think they got the numbers. But, they, yeah, they got rid of uh, half a dozen players in total and they're probably not finished. And a few of those guys are going to end up getting picked up either in the delisted free agency or the rookie draft, or they'll head back to their own comps. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if you're a team like West Coast or North Melbourne and you're really you're really looking for a player who's been on a, a list, knows how to sort of handle themselves, uh, being delisted by Collingwood doesn't mean it's the end of your career. Exactly Plenty right. of guys have come back from that. If, when you can't get into the best team on the park, it's not exactly a, a bad thing that you can't play. Trip Bianco was one I was very surprised about. That's been one of the ones when I've been reading a little bit of the Collingwood supporters. I oh, can't believe they've, they've let him go. So he'd definitely be, definitely be worth uh, another look. They're pretty much going to have a nice little um, lull until the end of the, dra- end of the trade period. Into the into the draft period with a couple of picks and just stock up when they can. Probably get a couple of kids and we'll, we'll see where they're going to trust their system and trust their their existing core at the moment. That's it, and they'll keep their numbers low because you, the the thing that flag, uh, flag window clubs 
they don't max out their list. They don't get the absolute most. So you've got to have a minimum of 36 players in your senior list, but you can have 38. So you'll find that the big clubs, they pay the big money to the 36 players that they know are a solid chance of getting a game each week. And then the other players are developmental players who so they're paying minimum wage and they're happy to churn that over because they're not really going to make a big difference to their flag year. Um, Geelong did that last year. It didn't work for them this year, but uh, we'll get on to them in a few in a few clubs' time, I guess. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So they're, they're going all right, Collywood. Now, this is one team that I'm fascinated about. We're talking about the uh, Essendon Bombers. Mate, can you ask answer for me they've picked up goldstein now this is a club that is for half the season three quarters season they were going all right then the wheels fell off in the back end big time mm. but they've picked up goldstein now that must be concerns on draper so they're just using him as a backup until draper gets right you think they've paid through the teeth for mckay and they've brought in gresham to add to a list that has so many cookie cutter players through their midfield, he does not offer any differential. What well, are they doing? I know they've got pick nine, a beautiful, a beautiful start, 31, 52, and 73, sitting 10th on the points list at the moment of 2,330. They did get rid of a few small forwards in the in in you know in, in um delisted. Uh, it went because you know you've you've got to you've got to move a few players on in the trade and whatever. But don't forget, Ben Mackay and Todd Goldstein played for a fellow by the name of Brad Scott for the North Melbourne, and he's now the coach of the Essendon Bombers. So that didn't surprise me, um, especially Goldie. Like Goldie basically played all of Brad Scott's ten yeah. or so yeah. seasons when he came north, and um, and and Ben Mackay. Brad Scott put a lot of work into him just to get him, you know, to, to whether he was going to even be an AFL player or not. Got him through injuries and developed him in the VFL. So North is spewing that they got rid of him, but they could pick three, and he's not worth pick three. He's not worth pick three. Uh, and that's, Essendon, yeah, no, that's... all right, we've, we've, we've got it. Because the Bombers have, like, three million bucks to spend, right? They, they've, they've got rid of a few, few highly paid players. They have been saving this money for a long time and they've smashed free agency open. I think this might be the last time we ever see uh, three players go to one club in free agency. I reckon the AFL is going to stamp that out. Um, it's not fair, but it's in the rules, so they did it. Yeah, I don't, I don't see an issue with it. Where I would have an issue with three people in free agency going to the one club, if it was Collingwood, Brisbane... Um, Carlton, Port Adelaide, but they don't have. They don't, no, but that's what I'm saying. If it was like that, that that top four realm, that's where my concern. That was where my concern would be. Uh, looking at that too. Um, sorry, Carlton. Yeah, that that's where my concern would be. But I don't. So I've I've got a bit of a feeling. You know what they can do when it comes to free agency numbers. If they've got the dollars that they've put themselves in the position to do so, but I, I don't think like Mackay's going to be great down back, but they're going to be losing Zerk Thatcher potentially. Dodoro's doing Dodoro's doing his usual trick. They want they want Dersma for nothing, but you're going to pay through the teeth for for Zerk Thatcher. Well, it's Dodo's last dance, mate. Oh, He's doesn't up. he? And doesn't he want the dance floor to himself? God, I think that th this free agency thing, he's that's why he wants to set a new record there. But um, I reckon he's got a few tricks up his little sleeve. Um, he always does. So he'll drive a hard bargain. He'll he'll make Port do something they don't want to do, like trade Dersma. I reckon that's happening. Yep, you reckon that's happening? It looks like it because um, Port, <coughs> Port need these tall players and they're, and they're not happy with the tall players they've no. got. So if you can't use the fellas you've got, then you need to get some others. Yeah. And the, and then you, and but this is the thing, and we'll get to port later. But they've just gone. We want everyone. Yeah. And they haven't got any picks. They haven't. And uh, we're going to get into port v very very shortly. But they've sort of created a rod for their own back, where yeah, they want everything, but where they're not willing to, to give anything up to get what they need. It's a stunning one. Uh, Talking about a club that's not getting anything whatsoever, it's going the complete opposite where everybody wants to jump ship 
Uh, talking about the Fremantle Dockers, they are sinking at the moment. Yeah, and as the boys. What is going boys. on over there, Tommy? Because they've it's not just the players that are leaving. You think, okay, if players are leaving, what are they getting in return? They're sitting uh, 17th on the ranking list at the moment. They've got picks 34, 46, 60, and 64. 17th when it comes to the, the ranking points of uh, 1,120. So don't even worry about putting bids. So they can't put bids in for anyone. The players, unless they can find the, the gorgeous needle in the haystack, they're not really going to be bringing any talent in. Yet for the amount that they've lost, they've lost Schultz, they've lost Henry this year. This club is going backwards at a rate of knots. Is it the yeah. club? Is it Longmuir? What is going on? Something's not right there. Is it Peter Bell? I don't know if it is necessarily that. I think I think it's a two-club town, and it's not the biggest town. The media is very like this. So when you're, not, when you're going well, the media loves you. When you're going badly, the media buries you. And people think that Frio have sort of had a bit of a, an easy run while West Coast have been dismal. Mm. But I just think Frio never really um, gets a good run. And they keep doing these things that... Um, the duck from the purple rain would call dockery, and this has been a very dockery kind of period where they they traded with uh, Port Adelaide to to you know to get their future first. Yep. I mean, what's that gonna? What good's that gonna do? Like that's just a crazy trade. Like the very thing, the one thing they needed to keep was 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 that pick, and no, we're going to get rid of that. And they're and they're doing they're doing crazy things like um, you know well they're they're, they're trading out their players which they can't keep now Liam Henry is a WA boy so what does that what, say about a club when a WA boy doesn't even want to be in WA anymore he was their NGA pick too so they they've had him from when he's fifteen developed him and put, played him through Peel probably playing with his cousins and stuff and not 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 meaning anything by that but the Peel team has some brilliant players who are um, brothers and cousins of AFL players um, who just you know didn't quite get up to the level. Like Harley Bennell, um, his 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 brother and his cousins play there, so you know he's 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 got roots there. But he seems to think that he, he he needs to come over and play in Melbourne, and maybe maybe that's just a dream that a lot of players have. It doesn't matter whether they're from Victoria or wherever. Um, and in back in the day when you and I were young roosters. That's what all the players did, wasn't it? Just come to the VFL and make big money. Yep. Make the cigarette money back in those days, wasn't it? But hey, but they were quality cigarettes. That, <laughs> but I, I just think that for, from a free man, that, that this club has to be looked into. Like I know if West Coast weren't going as bad as they were, like at least West Coast have been losing players for the simple fact that they're old. They've overpaid them when it came to their contracts. So be it, all right? They're going through all that shit right now. They're, yep. they're going to come out better at the other end. But Fremantle, they're not even bottoming out. And they they had the opportunity with Jackson coming in. Darcy got injured for a bit throughout the year. Jackson flourished in the ruck. Perfect opportunity for trying to get as many chips in as they can for Darcy. They didn't do that. They lost Lob the year before. Tabernard's not getting any younger. Fife's not getting any younger. They just I just don't know what is going on over there. I, I don't see any, any direction at all from Fremantle. At least I know with West Coast... They're bad, but hey, you know what? We've got a few picks. We'll, we'll try and do something with them this year. We've got number one, which is a question I want to get into when we get to them as well, to what they really should do with it. Yeah. Free are well, just – like they're, they're not anywhere. They're not anywhere players-wise, picks-wise, relevance-wise. No, they're garbage. Um, and um, they, they were very young this year, and they just got younger. They just got younger. Just delisted a bunch of 30-somethings. Well, you want to talk about a team who's getting uh, the complete opposite of that, which is older, is the <laughs> Geelong Cats. Now, I know that they're playing hardball on some fringe targets, which you've spoken about. Uh, Asava Radagalia. Don't ask me how he's become a first or second rounder for a guy that wasn't even getting a game. But isn't it just when it comes to trade period, uh, everybody thinks that they can turn chicken shit into chicken salad? And it goes I completely. Think the they wrong just way. wanted to. I think they just. I think Chris Scott just wanted to, to get Asava the free agency so he could get a first round pick for it. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. They've got one, one pick in the draft. One at pick eight at the moment. They've got uh, fifteen hundred and fifty one points, which puts them thirteenth. But that's based, like I said, on one pick. 
Uh, they want to move Radaglia on. They want the world for him, but aren't willing to actually go anything back the other way. Uh, no, they, they never, they never negotiate. They just no. say this is the price. Are they are they becoming the new the new Essendon? They've always been like that. Have they? Yeah. I, 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 it's well, almost when since Mackie's taken over, they've seen to be a little bit tougher on yeah, the way but, things are. But they, they haven't always been like this. No, the same the same people are, are pulling the strings in in the back in the background. Stephen Wells was their list manager for yep. almost twenty years, um, and he's just take, he's he's like Dodo. D Dodoro's only stepping into a an, a back role, so he's not so front and center with all that stuff. You, yep. you bring in he's got Matty Rosa coming in underneath him for next year, but Dodoro will still be there somewhere in footy management, somewhere to do with recruitment and all the rest of it. Um, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty full on you know three hundred and sixty five day a year job. Yeah. Uh, so Stephen Wells is the same at Geelong. He's stepped back, but he's he's been mentoring Mackie the whole way through, oh. and so Mackie's even worse but because they... he wants to make deals and yeah. you know he played hardball with his own former premiership teammate in Tommy Hawkins. <laughs> Said we're only going to pay you chicken feed, and Hawkins went all right. Well, I'll go to Sydney. <laughs> now he was going to go to Melbourne apparently at one stage. Like that's uh, that's just oh, I don't know. It just it stuns me how they can do what they do in their age profile as well too, and that that just yeah yeah just, no the, look Geelong have to trade that pick eight, but they're not they don't have to do it anytime soon. Yeah, and they they've also had another three players sign on as well too so yeah but once again in that older realm stanley rowan and i can't think of the third one off the top of my head but that doesn't really matter because it's not about signing those ones it's they're getting it that you know they went chips in this year it didn't work they're not changing anything they're still going with that older i think they're just going to squeeze everything they possibly can out of this group uh they did get a bit of youth coming through last year um but Mm, the future's starting to get a bit thin with them. Yeah. And, and and there's no rumours for anyone coming to their club either. That's the other thing. There's nothing that makes me go, ooh, who's going to Geelong? No one. Isn't that funny? But you know what? They, they have must have had, run out of they, house and land packages to give the players. They have had that um, that young basketball player join them in as a Category B rookie. Yep. Um, and I should go, go back a little bit to for Carlton. They've had a couple of Irish blokes join as Category B rookies. Um, there's a couple more, but I'll announce them for the clubs that they've got. So you know, it's it's already started for that because Category B, you can you can fill that any time. Yep, that's do, not a draft thing. That's not a. Do, do you think that a, Geelong will split that pick? They have to. What are they going to do? Unless they get two, unless they only because you've got to use you've got to use three picks. Now, what that means is they could they could just have because. Just because the, the there's picks that are worth draft points, those are the only ones we count. But there's still picks in the fifth and sixth round, so their picks are eight, seventy eight, and ninety eight, right? So or whatever, you know, it's yeah. those those picks will come into around sixty if everyone else has passed. Yeah. They only reckon it's going to be about fifty-eight players or something like that. Um, we'll 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 do another show and we'll we'll have we'll have those numbers of yep. how many list spots there are and what the picks are. So yeah, the Asaba trade, you'd you'd think that they'd be wanting a pick for this year, but whatever they get, they get because Port haven't got anything to Apart give them. But, they, but but wouldn't you trade eight? Considering the Gold Coast went from four to ten. 10 to, well, it became 11, 11 out of 14, and then they traded 14, and it turned into all these second round picks mm. were double what they started. Yeah, so, they got six first round, six second round picks, and when you add them up, look, it's it's gold. It, it is literally gold across the board. And they're going to sell them again, but we'll get onto them <laughs> in just a moment time. So let's have a look at your boys, mate. Gold Coast Suns. Now, if there's been one club that's been playing. Uh, a lot of ball in the la in, in this trade period. It literally has been your mob, being the the Gold Coast Suns. Not from a trades perspective, they've had nobody come in whatsoever. But they're just stacking up these points because they know that they've got literally three first rounders walking through the doors into a club that is so stacked with talent, and finally now have a conductor 
that's going to turn musicians into an orchestra in yeah. Damien Harvey. Yeah, well, we, we know that, that Dimmer can can get the young guys in there. He doesn't pile them all in at once. He he picks his, his, his most experienced side and then dots it with a couple of inexperienced players so that they... They, have, they get tested out for a few games and out they go. And by the end of the year, he's got his best 22 sorted. And it usually includes one or two breakout players. And if he can keep that momentum going for a couple of years, it's going to be pretty scary. Exactly. Because right. players will stick around and, they, and the best players won't be asking for Tom Lynch money. They'll, no. they'll, they'll be sort of sticking around for Tom Hawkins money. And when you have a look uh, at their sort of hand as we go into it, sorry to cut you off, but if you have a look at their hand, they've got... 24, 27, 28, 32, 36, 38. With the supplementary numbers of 62, 66, and 71, bringing them up to a third on the point rankings of 3,948. They've got that many points to spend. They get the 25% discount. Is it 25% discount when it comes to... 20% yeah, discount when it 20, comes to nominating players? So it's, just, worth, it's worth 5,000 points when you think about it. Yeah, they are, they're stacking and they're smart. And they're doing what they need to do, and they're like, you know what? If you want my if you want my big picks, go for them. That's why Melbourne uh, traded from their fourteen to the eleven and gave them the extra extra picks because one club thinks, well, you know what? The draft isn't that thick once it gets into that sort of second round in our belief. So there's no point having these second round picks if we can give them to a club who wants them and move up a couple of spots and get two genuine A grade first rounders. It's smart, and Gold Coast go. We just keep adding up the points. You're in, I like the way that you said it, though, that they will do some wheeling and dealing because you have to have a number of spots to the number of points on draft night. I know Melbourne, uh, I won't say raw to that system because it wasn't a raw, but they were the ones who originally went, if we get all these lower end picks and add them up, we can then put bids in for players and then maybe something will come from that. So they were the ones who initiated it, and the AFL went, no, 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 we, we can't do this because Melbourne were going into a draft with nine picks, picking two people and trying to add up all these points, and they never never eventuated. So I like I like the strategy of this as well too, but you might as well give us the heads up. What are they going to do towards the back end of this trade week, and how was that going to set them up for the trade period in late November? Oh, sorry, the draft yeah, well, in they, November. They, you know, they, they've said to Charles and, and, the, and then Hollands, um, look, you you're not in the best 22. Um, Dim has basically told them you can play your way into it. Um, I don't. I don't pay any credence to the idea that Dimmer doesn't want Chol. Dimmer didn't want to lose Chol when he left Richmond. Yeah, exactly. He was just a free agent, and he and he was getting paid a lot better money at the Suns. And now the Suns are saying, "Well, we're, we're stacked, and we've got a really great guy coming in who we we you know he's a local. You know, you've got no chance, yep. Chol. Um, but if if the Hawks don't play ball, they, the, the Suns will just keep him, and they'll wear the four hundred grand, and they'll and they'll send him to market again next year if he can't get a game, but he'll still be worth something to them. And I think the thing that's sort of he throw... picks up there next year. Yeah. So Casbolt Casbolt has thrown the, the spanner in the works, hasn't he up there? Because he was brought in literally at the end of the at the start of the season. It was it was this season, wasn't it? That he was brought in yeah. just uh, as, no, that last no, no. season. Last year, um, no, he but he was he brought was in because oh, we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll see what we can do with him. And he's he's kicking from a guy that would 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 miss him. He couldn't even get close. Like he, he was he was Bailey Fritching on a regular basis. If you remember that shot in, in the first foul against Collingwood this year, he he was Fritching all over the joint. And now he's turned into an absolute like he's resurrected his career up there. I don't know whether he's enjoying his football, less pressure on him, but. That makes Chole, instead of being the second wheel behind King, has now been, well, you're a little bit obsolete. We don't need you because we've got this gun kid coming in. And I, I, mean, I, I rate him. I rate him. I think that he, he the guy can play. You just got to yeah. find somewhere for him. You got to look. You got to look at what what Casbolt does, and that is, uh, he's quite huge, and he and he takes takes strong pack marks. And if you want someone who's going to run up the ground outside of 50, take a mark, wheel around and try and find the Kosher or King inside 50. Yep. And even though he used to be a crappy shot at um, a goal, he's always been a really good field kick, especially for someone who's 200 centimetres. So that's how he's beaten out Chol. But Chol can kick more goals and he's faster and he's better on ground level. So it was kind of like, is Chol, a Chol and King the same player? Oh, no, no. But they, well, King's got more upside, but he's coming back from the ACL. But 
you're not going to put King in defence and you're not going to put him in the VFL. No. So what do you do with Chop? But the other guy is Hollands, and he's a midfielder, and they've been playing him on the wing. His brother's winger, premier, uh, a preliminary final winger, played most of the year as a rookie. So he's going well. But uh, Elijah's just never quite managed to find its second position, and he's behind about six blokes in the in the Suns' midfield. So they'll trade they'll, they'll, they'll trade them, probably, and they'll also be trading picks into the future because you can't use them all this year. And Carlton will want to take him, and Carlton have only got, like I said, three picks to play with, which is that 22. They're not going to do anything with that. It's 26 or 70. So you'd think that would be a 70, wouldn't they? It's just, for, for no, no, the Suns, the Suns can keep him, mate. They've got him under. They've got both. Oh, so unless it's a twenty-six, you can. We'll, we'll just keep him. Well, uh, it might it might makes make it worth their while to give up the twenty-six because that's points. Yeah. So you give them pick thirty-six and Hollands, and ask for a future third and pick twenty-six. Yep. Thank some points from next year. Get some more points for this year. Thanks for coming, Blues. Here's a player we weren't going to use anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, I tell you what, I mentioned uh, a club that. Like I said, Gold Coast, you know we haven't made finals at all. This club here, their back half of the season was exceptional when we talk about the, the GWS. Adam Kingsley, sensational first year. They're going to lose some key depth, and you've, you've written this in your in your notes as well too. Uh, but they're looking like they're, they're going to be all right. At the moment, they're only one of, well, I was going to say one of two, one of four clubs, but They've got two first rounders in seven and sixteen. They get the forty three uh, and fifty nine. Seventh for a team that finished fourth to be seventh on the ranking points at three thousand two hundred and forty seven. They're going to be losing some, but they can definitely bring some in. And they, uh, Adam Kingsley, is not afraid to play play kids. He's not afraid to to bring the the youth into the into the group as well too. There's definitely yeah. something um, going on with them that. I reckon, like I think, like you've said, they are they're setting themselves up for success, and I actually like it. Oh yeah, well it's the it's the old blokes. They're losing Phil Davis, who was a foundation player, and Daniel Lloyd. So you know, both quality players. It's not going to affect them. No. They, those guys haven't been the ones who propelled them to finals this year, uh, and they're losing Matt Flynn, who was looking like he'd yeah. finally he finally. He's, take he's I could and, definitely yeah, I could definitely see that one hurting them a little bit. Yeah, but I mean they've they've still got two. Braden Pruce, but you didn't see much of him at the D Demons. Did you know Braden Pruce is actually a Suns Academy product, by the way? Who isn't a Suns Academy product? Let's let's be frank. <laughs> Who isn't in the league now a Suns Academy product? There's a, quite a few that you you might be surprised. Um, so so yeah, they they lost a few big bikes. They got heaps of draft picks, um, and they got a couple of handy little um, academy guys that they can match bids on. One guy is. Uh, He's going to be one of those guys who becomes a bit of an icon straight away because um, he's uh, he's got the big oh, flowing hair and he flies for pack marks and he's big big skinny fellow. Charlie McCormack, mm-hmm. his name is. He played for the Allies in the under-18s this year. And, gee, I, was, I love – because, I mean, I'm, Allies are my team too, right? So uh, I love watching him there and I was thinking, geez, he, you know, a lot of clubs will love him. Uh, probably a second round or two, so that they'll, they'll get their picks early. And as always, GWS will get away with a nice little draft haul, um, and and they're uh, and they're probably going to be better off for another shot at the top four next year. The bastards. Yeah, and I think the other thing that um, when you look at that sort of setup for them as well, too, they've got this guy that hasn't even burst onto the scene at all yet. And I th- the, the the way that they've they've sort of used him this year because Jesse Hogan was outstanding just for what he was able to deliver. Um, he's got this Aaron Cadman bloke just floating around. Look, you, you, you talk about you talk about these these guys moving out. They, they've got people that move straight back in as well too. And it's probably one of those ones that give him an extra season. In it doesn't have to be straight away because you know bide your time, get your skill. He's he's really I think I think he's going to be something special for the Giants, and they, they're just going to continue their their form to to top four because their their midfield was sensational towards the back end. Like I said. But they've got they've got two first rounders, and they, they've got kids behind the scenes that we haven't seen yet that are just going to step in when Canelio and Kelly and Whitfield start to to, to to age on a bit as well too. So I'm not I'm not worried. I think they're actually going to get stronger. I do too because that pick seven is probably going to be about pick nine by the time they pick. Yep, and there's some 
bloody good players available in that little part of the draft. Won't go into that because that's not where we're concentrating not tonight. Yet, not yet, not they yet. Will, they will pick up some nice talent and they won't have to make a great deal of changes to their list either to get out with an A+. plus. Well, I tell you who's, uh, who's going all right at the moment when you're talking about trades and movements, etc. We're talking about the Hawthorne Hawks. Finishing 16th, but they're sitting 7th on the point rankings at the moment, 3,247. So they've been going all right, which is nice to see. But they've got four. Then they've got a bit of a drop, 33, 44, 54, and 63. Rumours and innuendo of players wanting to go over to the Hawks as well, too. We're still waiting. We're talking about uh, Marlboro Choi. We're talking about Massimo D'Ambrosio. Gunston, which is an interesting wanting to come back as well too. So they've got some some eyes in the fire with uh, making a few trades and they're probably going to have to do something with either uh, late picks and, and next year's picks, what they've got. Um, but the the way that they're um, the way that they're working is exactly what um, Sam Mitchell wants. He wants youth in the team. He wants to get quality into the team. Um, they were the best 16th team I've seen for a long, long time. They didn't deserve the sort of record that they have. They were young, but they played they played organised ball. And you can but see if you funny watch. How they, they're, they're one of those teams that gets better yep. as the season comes to a close mm -hmm. and they start knocking off some good teams and they start knocking off some teams that are in the running for finals. But... They, they, you know, I mean, they, they charged up the, the ladder for a bit there to, to get off the bottom, and then, uh, and then suddenly they just conveniently fell. You know, they, they still played well right till the finish line because they knew they couldn't get up. They were still going to be third last, yep. so they just piled on the wins. Whereas teams like the Suns pile on the losses at that time of the year, and uh, and, and you know, what's the point? Uh, but uh, no, look, the the thing with the Hawks is their draft strategy is clear cut and they're buggerizing around with it they don't need to they want the very very early pick they can't get up to pick one north's not going to get rid of pick two or three so they're going to be picking a four uh which is going to like likely go out to five with a bid for walter if that happens yep. or if it doesn't happen they'll bid for walter and they'll still get the pick five so the that's the got that's their strategy they've got that guy and they've got two father sons coming in uh will mccabe and Kalsha Dia. Now, um, he's gonna be the first Kalsha in the uh, AFL bar none, won't he? Well, his dad, his late father, his father passed yeah, away this year, actually. Um, gun. his father and his uncle played played flags for Hawthorne, right? So he's he's Hawthorne royalty, and I've got to say, he he, he the, they made a documentary out of mm. out of his old man getting a you know terminal illness, and the the you know the kids are there sort of during and after it's really sad actually but um the way he spoke about his dad I, I think the hawthorne just went we've got a quality guy here and we've no matter what we're picking him um ho i really hope he has an afl career um do you remember the old days when the the deer brothers played for yep. the hawks yep. they, the undersized ruckman and they played in tandem and they pretty much invented the tandem ruck and you know that's been used a lot you know, since then, not so well for the D's this year. But that's their thing. They've got those three players, and the rest of it should just go on the players they want to draft, and they want to trade in. Paul won a Norm Smith medal. Like, yeah, yeah know, that's right. You don't do that if you're not a gun. Like, you you, you, you you, play. You can play. It's as simple as that, too. So they are premiership star, Greg and Paul, but Paul won a, a Norm Smith. What, what more can you ask for? Uh, oh, look, they're, 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 well they're, they're, they're legends. I think they might have both been in... Oh, I'm, I'm talking out of school now. I don't know if they were in the team of the century or not. They're, it'd be pretty. Um, it wouldn't matter because you, they'd be picking new teams of the century all the time with all the yeah. bloody premierships they've got exactly at Hawthorne. Right. Exactly. Um, right. I hope that they finish last for the next five years. But anyway, no. um, <laughs> that might be they win ten more premierships no. in the following. I've seen enough Hawthorne premierships, and you know my mate <laughs> Lee Mac. Lee Mac, big fan of the pod, just reminds me about it all the time. Yeah, right, all right. Right. It's, it's, here we go. Like, time, it's like. One every three years. Oh, just, I'm over. <laughs> Don't want to hear about it. All right, Melbourne Demons, my boys. Uh, interesting. Finished sixth, uh, did the corner cover, which is usually the Sam Stozer, but when you do it two years in a row, it's now called the corner cover. 
but not pretty. It is, but yeah, that wasn't pretty at all. But they've got some nice little draft hands, 6, 11, and 42 at the moment. They bring in um, Tom Fullerton from the Brisbane Lions, who I was a little bit happy with because of his height. And he's only a young bloke, 23, I think. He's, so he's got a he's bit of a future. Over the boomers, mate. Yep. He's a big boy. Um, we, we, we had, we've had Fullerton, we've had Brad Q, we've had all the basketball uh, all-stars. Unfortunately, none of them have the basketball background like Pendlebury. They're sitting fourth on the points ranking, 3,475. Uh, they've, they've set themselves up. The, 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 the petty talk still won't go away with a couple of days to go. I personally think he will stay, even though the club says it. But you know what? You get given the godfather offer. And I don't think 10 and 14 is going to be enough. But 10, 14 in Macadam, not sure either. Uh, look, they want two picks in the draft, according to what you've written up. Are they any chance to get pick one if they throw in a future first? Because we were talking yeah. about a little bit low earlier on. Yeah, West Coast I, I need picks. A hot chance, West man. Coast need picks because they one player is not going to change them around. They need three or they need three or four first rounders to come into that group. Yeah, and the way to do it isn't for Melbourne just to trade directly with West Coast because West Coast will turn around and say, what, we're not going to go from one to six. It'll be more like seven or eight by the time we get to pick it. We want a top two pick. And so the way to do it is for Melbourne and North Melbourne and West Coast to get together and swirl their picks around until they're all happy with what they've got because West Coast want Dan Curtin who's very good and, and highly touted. North Melbourne obviously want pick one, but if there's if there's a future first in it for them and they can bank something in the future, because they don't, the problem with having five first round picks and three of them are going to be late first rounders is that in, in four to five years time, you've got to pay them all big money. Yeah. And they've already got a lot of players that they're going to have to pay big money in the next couple of years. So if they, if, if North could turn you know, 15, 17 and 18 into pick six and a future pick, then two and three could become three and six for them or something like that. Um, so, they're, you know, they're not, they're, they're not so far out of it. Melbourne would have to chuck everything in, including a future first and maybe even more. I don't know what else they've got. Yeah, I know, right? But the other, the other option is to hang tight, pick at six and 11, and trade 42 into the future because there's a young fellow by the name of Noah Uze, plays for the Oakley Chargers yeah, as right. an underager, and he goes all right. He's a bit bigger than the old man, and he likes the goals. And he's I like reckon the, uh, the old D's are, are, will be mad if they don't pick him. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to be a first-rounder or not, um, but, you know, you, if you can't you, – they don't they, – oh, but the other thing is the D's – the D's pick 42, you make the last five years, and they're picking grand final winning players. So, I yeah, don't know. It was a low one. Um, the, the interesting thing is that when we, we talk Sparrow. about, well, Sparrow was a late pick as well. Sparrow is the one that came out of the Jack Watts swap. So, when you have a look at what Melbourne picked up for Watts, which was yeah. Bailey Fritch, they also oh, picked up Tom Sparrow that. as part of that as well too. So, the the recruiting team have, have a really good knack of picking kids in the, in the lower the lower echelons as well too. So that's why I'm looking at uh, 42 and going, I'm, I'm not exactly too worried about that. Look, I know that they're in the window. They need that forward. That's my concern. If Petty doesn't get up, it's going to be a, a struggle. I know that Adelaide have thrown massive, massive bits at the Ds, and I don't think they'll go for that. Shane McAdam will come to the Ds. It has to eventuate. Like, let's be honest. that They're going to lose him to, to nothing anyway. The question I have for you, and this is for everybody, is Harley Reid that good? Yes. And I'll tell you why. You don't have to put him in the in the centre bounces. You can put him in the back pocket or the forward pocket or on the wing. You can almost put him in the ruck and he'll just do something amazing. Um, I've watched a lot of him in the junior level and nobody else is in, even comes near him. But he does all the good things. He doesn't fumble. He's a team player. He can kick a goal when you need it. He'll he'll fight till the end, even if he's absolutely knackered. Um, a player that you could compare him to, without exaggerating, is Dusty. Okay. Now Dusty probably probably doesn't have quite as many much of the versatility, but if if they if Reed plays his whole career in that Dusty kind of 
half your time in the midfield, half your time in the forward line. Yeah, he'll kick two, three, four goals every game, but he'll get the 30 touches as well. And and he'll just keep the ball in, in you know, you win a lot more than you lose with him and the team. A team like Melbourne would go directly into premiership favouritism. Put it that way. That's that's how good he is. Okay, so Melbourne, get it done, please. All right. Um, all right, let's have a look at the guys at the top of the food chain. We've uh, spoken a little bit about them already, but this is now their opportunity to shine. We're talking about the North Melbourne Football Club. Picks 2, 3, 15, 17, 18, and 57. They are number one on the points ranking. They're, they're 3,600 points above anybody else. They've also brought in Dylan Stevens. They've brought in Brad Fisher. They've brought in uh, Nguyen. I can't remember his first name. And Pink. Who's Pink? Toby Pink. Toby Pink. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Well, I thought that was a joke on my list, but no, Toby Pink. I never even heard of him. Uh, uh, he's out of the Stanford, uh, but he played for the he played Neithal for. Well, he was on the Swans list. Yeah. Um, I know him pretty well because I watched a bit of, watched a bit of Neithal back in the day. Um, he's a good player. He's just the Swans are a good club. And uh, he went back to the Sandful and no one saw him again. I've been keeping an eye on him for a while. And um, he plays for Glen Elk. And they're a good, they won the whole thing this year. So he, um, he he's, he's, he's obviously North, you know, North are looking to get a cheapie here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. They've, they've turned over, I think, maybe 11 players. And that, that might not even be the end of it. Sorry, they've turned over 10 players. But they had, you know, Cunnington, Hall, Howe, and Zeeble retire. Um, you know, there's a lot of That's game lot of, experience there. Is, and then Ben McKay, and, and uh, not that he's had that many games, no, but, but uh, Todd Goldstein left in free agency. So heaps of experience has gone. So Pink will come in as I think he's about 25. Um, and he's a, he's a big fella. So he'll play in defense. Well, that's the, um, that's the, 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 the James Frawley pick right there. Pick three for Mackay. Chip. That's one of the things that has to change with this whole free agency thing is that whole wherever you finish the next pick. That's absolute bullshit. I'm sorry. Uh, this has really got that whole Alistair Clarkson 2004 sort of ring to it, hasn't it? It's lots of high-end picks. They bring in some support factors in Stevens and Fisher. He's going to the draft saying, I've got Wardlow last year. I've got the Cheese last year as well too. I'm going to get a couple of absolute guns again. They've already got the hyphen, uh, who we absolutely love as well. The, the, he's setting them up really nicely. The AFL have obviously supported them with their extra bits and pieces, which I don't. I think they got overcompensated when it came to that because there's been other teams who have been equally as poor over the last number of years and haven't even got a, a slice of what North Melbourne have got. But. They can only do what's been put in front of them. And you, you, once again, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And they put the cap out. They got some stuff back. They've worked it beautifully. And they could even turn those firsts into a couple more if they want, if they really wanted to. Between 3 and 15, they could do some work in there as well. I mean, you asked about the Ds and should they go for pick one. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. But North have to. Yep. Like, and they can't pussyfoot around and say, oh, we'll, we'll give you 15, 17, 18 in a future second because the, what, what West Coast want is that pick two. Yep. And you, you could you'd say that maybe two and 15 doesn't do it, but maybe two, 15 and 18 for one and 23. You know, like you, you give and take. I will say this. I reckon the AFL was pretty smart with those priority picks in, in the sense that they, the AFL knows that West Coast are probably looking at their, their draft hand and going, gee, our, you know, we came last and our first pick's number one and our next pick's 23. And 23 keeps drifting out because it's a second rounder yep. and it's going to be like 29 or 30 by the time the draft comes around. So West Coast have to trade and the AFL have given North the picks, fairly or unfairly. West Coast, if, if that trade happens... West Coast benefits from North getting the extra picks, so they're both of them in the in their own, in that in that kind of way. If you're going to give North the picks and then make them trade them, because that's what they did, right? They said if if you improve this year, we might take one or two of those future picks off you, mm. but you can trade them this year. And once they're traded, they're done. They, they would be North could really 
do something with it this year too. Like they could definitely, I think that they'll do something with, I reckon you're right, 15, I reckon, yeah, they, they can't just give 17 and 18 because by the time everybody comes in, those 17 and 18s are in the 20s. Yeah, it's not really worth It's it. not really tangible. That's why Melbourne <laughs> 6 and 11 looks really, really sexy. So if Melbourne went, look, North, we'll give you 6 and 11. Yeah. You give us two, North, and then give that over to West Coast. They still get... Unless North really want Curtin, there's no point in them having them having pick two. Really, because if this thing, that's the only thing that that you haven't heard is is that um, West Coast will pick Curtin at one, and and North will get Reed at two. It's it's just going to be either West Coast trade number one, or they pick Reed. Look, I think they should just do what's best for the competition and just give it to Melbourne. Just give the pick one to Melbourne. Everyone will be happy. They'll get Reed. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. That would be sensational. All right. Yeah, I, I think uh, earlier in the year I was looking at this particular uh, – because I should I should give a bit of credit here. We're, we're looking at um, Law's provisional 2023 AFL draft picks, um, which gives us a bit of our information here. We're not just pulling it out of our butts. Um, and Law, L-O-R-E – all the secrets are out. Tommy, please. Yeah. You, 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 if you, I'll put a link in the description. It's probably, it's probably something to – to be looking at yeah. because a lot of what we're saying will make sense if you're able to look at it and crunch the numbers yourself. Um, I reckon um, North's hand is the strongest I've seen. Um, the Suns had those four picks in the top ten back then, if you remember, but they were they were four. They ended up being four, six, nine, and ten or something like that. Um, the two, three, fifteen, seventeen, and eighteen is is a massive hand it's big and um, and it could you know it, it, it could get even better if they can consolidate those later first rounders and if push them smart, in if they're smart they can like definitely do Blanc it might might be a, a buyer there yeah it's going to be interesting these last couple of days isn't it to sort of see where it all fits in it's funny not players wise some it's almost like drive to survive some people look at the the, the top end like what's going on with the, the the picks some are looking at players it's just interesting how it is our horses for courses. But funny enough, there's lots of courses, uh, Tommy, but this club have no horses. Port Adelaide, we want this one. We want this one. We want this one. We want this one. But we've got absolutely nothing to give back whatsoever. They've got, and I'm just going to put this in perspective for you, everybody. Port Adelaide have got pick 25, and the only reason they got that was Compo. 41 and 49, they're in the danger zone of uh, ranking points of 1,400, sorry, uh, 1,455. No player is coming to them at this moment in time. You know, Zerk Thatcher seems to be the one that they want to get there, but Essendon are too stubborn to, to, to move him on. You've got Asava Radagalia, too stubborn. So they've got 25 and 41. They're probably going to have to on-trade 25 for one of those players. I don't know. They're going to have to go into their... They're going to have to go into future debt to try and get Zerk Thatcher over unless they do a straight swap for Dersma, which I don't see the issue with it. But um, once again, I'm, I'm only looking at it from a, a helicopter view on this. Um, uh, Happened they, 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 they had their shot this year, didn't they? They had their shot this year. I don't think that they can win it. That's why they want to load up. You, if, you've, if you've got these, because, you know, you go back three years and everyone was saying Geelong's too old to win a flag, Collingwood's too old and they're too broke to win a flag, GWS is finished, they're not going to get you know, not gonna get back up in the finals, Port are too old and their, their players are, are all going to be, you know, you, you, you know, you did have your Robbie Grays and... Yeah. and um, you know, players who who did get too old, but there's still the others coming up behind them, mm. and yet they're all they're, they're still they're still loading up for now. And I think they just believe the Swans are another one. They just believe they're in the flag window, and if you don't load up with mature talent now, you that that window is gone. And when the when the oldies go, you've got these guys that you paid a lot for who are still in their prime. Mm. Um, but so, my issue you know, with Port, though, Tommy, is is that they've 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 got. They haven't got a backline. Well, that's they don't point. have a backline, and they're trying to bring people in to solve that issue. 
but they're not willing to hand over. No. Uh, they, no. They're, they're going to have to go into future debt and it's going to cost them this year and next year as well. Yeah, well, I mean, there's that there's that crazy, you know, that crazy thing of, 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 um, of, of you know, getting, getting into future debt. But you know what? The best teams do. The Demons made it work for them, just continually trading that late first round pick that, yep. you know, teams knew they were doing it. Uh, the Lions have been doing it quite a lot. So good teams do it. I think Richmond's done it on, on occasion where you, 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 you sell your future pick to pay for what you need now. Sometimes it bites you on the butt. And we're going to talk about that, how, how that's happened to Richmond this time around. But uh, we're not finished with Port yet. Um, they don't believe that they've got the Ruckman that they need on their list. And so now they, you know, they're you know they trying to go after Jordan Sweet. But I don't think he's any better than what they've got. Bryn Tickle was a serviceable well, Ruckman. Lysette's a, a homemade player. And uh, I was going to say Laddams, but Laddams left ages ago. Sorry about that. I, I just think that they've... You know, Rosie and Butters, sensational. But why, like, this is the opportunity they go, okay, Wines, can we get yeah. anything for him? Like, can we get – someone would take him. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Sons would probably give a future first for him. Just to get him in. Someone would, someone would give up yeah. something pretty valuable. They have to – I think the clubs who, who are smart enough know they have to give something up to get something. Yeah. Um, and, and Port don't – Port don't do it and – Jeez, oh, if they don't get if they don't get their rucks and, and their their um, backline worked out, they they're gonna have. I, when they won thirteen in a row, mm. and people were saying they were premiership favourites, it still no. wasn't a convincing. Th it was almost reminded me of the D's ten in a row in twenty twenty two. It was a very false economy. Like yes, they were winning, but it wasn't mm. convincing. Mm. And we saw what happened in the back end as well too. So that's that's going to be a sight to sort of see what happens. Uh, for the rest of their rest of their week leading into the trade, you, you spoke about this mob a little bit earlier on, and like Richmond, you, your your notes say officially the worst draft hand. They 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 went completely balls to the wall for Hopper and Taranto last year. Yeah. They've lost Cochin, they've lost Rewalt, and they've lost a couple others as well too. And to replenish the stocks, they've got twenty nine, fifty, sixty five, and sixty eight. They're last on the points level. Like they just like they're that low. They're just scraping over the thousand, which is a thousand and seventy-five. No player is saying I want to go to Richmond, which is what everybody wanted. They've one, got, they've there's one. Um, oh, sorry, Kaczynski. Kaczynski. I take that back. But, <laughs> but that's going to cost them their, their their highest pick. And then you've got, uh, and then they've just got more aging stars. Uh, the most got, overrated. They're, they're, they're full four, the most overrated full four, which I've seen in terms of Tom Lynch, who's still in a moon boot. And still getting paid seven um, figures because they back ended his salary. I think they still owe him another oh. more than three point five million over the next three years. That's, that's close to four million. It, look, and, oh, yeah, got him two flags, yeah. but a, a good club, you know, you can't foresee injury but this is once again they've got everything out of their list mm. but when they saw the writing was on the wall probably even of last year the writing was on the wall they should yeah. have done something with a couple of those players and they never did Hawthorne do it they're happy to move them on they didn't move them on and look what's happened it's it's they're, they're going nowhere Richmond they're, 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 they can't go anywhere and like I said if Kajitski is going to be it and what is he? Is he a key defender, I I or is he is he a, another tall? I, I mean, he's a bitzer. I think balls, he's a bitzer. Really? I mean, if they're fit, bits of here, bits of there. Tommy, I don't, I don't. I thought he was a forward, but I, I don't know. Maybe he's one of those ones that you know he doesn't have to compete with anybody else. He doesn't have Mitch Lewis breathing down his breathing down his neck. Maybe he'll he'll flourish a little bit, but I don't know. He's I don't know. I don't know. They they should have they should have just sold the farm this year, but I think it's comp because they also lost a young bloke by the name of Damien Hardwick. Um, who, you know, you're as young as the woman you feel, kind of thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Dimmer's gone, but Dimmer when they brought Hopper and Durando in, they promised them three-time premiership coach Damien Hardwick. We've still got our 
legacy players from our premierships, and we're really going to push hard to to keep the window open. Um, I don't think Marlon Pickett will be an AFL player after his court case over in WA. Um, they they should have traded Dusty, and they and they could have could have just made it a fire sale because they've got to pay him one point four million. You know, just give us a second round there and we'll say goodbye. He wanted to go, but they wouldn't let him. Who's that, Dusty? Uh, and he'll go for free next year. Dusty. Well, not for free, but it, it, they'll go for very cheap next year. Uh, I reckon he'll retire. Contract. He'll retire. He wants to play till he's 38, he reckons. Dusty does. Yep. Okay. That's what he was going up to the coast to say, don't worry, fellas, I'm on my way. Um, I just don't think it's going to happen this year because you guys have got a different plan. But next year, we'll, you know, we'll make it happen. I'll have my testimonial year with the Tigers, repay the fans, take all the money, and if I'm still going good. <laughs> Sell the merch. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, he's Water. getting as much money in in endorsements and stuff, but he hates the media. Yeah. The AFL just changed the media laws to say that players have to be made available. Every player on the list has to be made available to the media, and he doesn't want a bar of it. He just wants to go and sit on the beach. He just wants to play footy, and that's it. That's, that's it. it. Understand. They are they are headed for the bottom, and they need to start trading out their their um, commodities like um, Shy Bolton. Um, there, there's probably only a handful of players you'd want, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Baker. Yeah, yeah. Short. Those two would be at the top of the list. Bob. It's a bit. Did you say a moment ago? Bolton. Their, their ruckmen are both pretty good. Yeah. If you need a ruckman, you might grab one of them. They're getting a bit old in the tooth as well, too. I mean, I love I let my man, um, he's from up up my way, um, young Samson Ryan. Yeah. Manson. Um, I actually Manson. predicted Manson. he'd get drafted, but, but I didn't predict he'd get drafted by Richmond. I thought the Lions would pick him up. Yeah. Um, but um, no, he's a big he's a big unit, um, and he can play ruck forward, and that's a pretty handy position to have because your resting ruckman can go and kick a couple of goals for you and chop out in the ruck. You've you've got the game half won. Makes it makes it a bit easy, but yeah, they're in they're they're ugh, they're not looking good, not looking good at all. Yep. Um, can I ask you about this mob, St Kilda? Aren't they very interesting with what they've been doing so far? So they've got 13, 21, 35, 56. Henry comes in. They've also got Sauce, haven't they, at uh, St Kilda as well too. They yeah, bring Ross, in Liam Ross, Henry. Ross, Finally, Ross, we get to talk about a player coming in. Uh, they, they get the whole crew back together at St Kilda. Yep. All the old players, Ross just got them all to come back. They're, they're all, it's all Kumbaya down at St Kilda. And it worked. They got the young players who, who'd been playing VFL six months before and they won the first five games and everyone said they were going to go all right. And they stayed in the finals all year and then, good night, Irene, they were hopeless in the last few Well, years. I got to see that final against GWS and for the first 10 minutes, they were, they were looking all good. Yeah, and then the eleventh minute kicked in, and GWS went. Mm, we've had enough of these boys, and just played over them. Yep, because they've got a modern coach, and they've got a modern game. That's team. going to become the gulf in in footy, uh, as we see guys like McRae winning winning flags. Yep. We're going to see the, the coaches of the last sort of fifteen years. That I'm not going to say struggle, but they're going to need to reinvent their game plan. Yeah, the whole defense is defense is king. Yeah, is still there. Like you still need to have a good defence, but move the ball quick. And yeah. there are clubs that can do that, but you need to have the players up the ground. Not put. It's a real fine line because you can't have the players moving up the ground too far. Mm. So when they do come out quick, that they're there. Mm. And um, and so Kilda have got speed, and that's and they've got fitness. They came out. They started last year saying we're the fittest club around, and clubs like the Demons just went. We're the fittest club. Everyone knows it. And Adelaide turned around, well, we've got the best well, fitness coach in the world. They have. Um, you know, the Demons and, what, Liverpool. Who else Who else had him? The, 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 you know, Adelaide, these... uh, Port Adelaide had him as well. Yeah, but who, who, who which clubs overseas? Arsenal. Was Liverpool it was and, Arsenal, Liverpool. Like, you know, his resume is the best in the world. Yeah. And um, so, you know, fitness, speed. It, it all counts. You can kind of see why they're getting guys like Paddy Dow and Liam Henry. They haven't got Dow yet, but they, they will. Um, but sometimes you just feel like St Kilda just goes and gets players who are on the market because they're on the market. 
and they oh, pay overs. Perfect. That is an actual good, good way of yeah. putting it. Well, do we have to go with the whole Hanabry, <laughs> Jones, Crouch? It's like you, you, you always know St Kilda's going to have a crack. It's almost like, who's available? Walk in the St Kilda, yay! And it's like, no, there's a reason why these guys are on the trade table. They have either passed it, they're not going to get any more out of them. Yeah, they talk about get, getting rid of Nick Coffield, but it wasn't that long ago that he was a first round draft pick and early first round draft pick. And he's he's exactly that kind of player who on potential he could he could be everything they wanted yep. to be. He's just had a wretched run of injuries. So what do you do? Just trade him? Of course they will. You've got a list of forty five players. Just let him sit there on the injury list until he comes good. But no, they'll trade him out for nothing. And someone, someone will like, get him um, and you'll probably yeah, turn it around yeah. like Blake Akers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't see much, to be honest. I don't think St Kilda will make finals next year anyway. I don't see that, you know, that 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 13, 21, 35. Okay, 13 okay. By the time it gets pushed out, it'll be late teens. They've got 21, so they'll, they'll get a couple of, yeah, but there, there's no improvement. And if Max King doesn't fire, they struggle to kick a score. Oh, I just don't see how they're going to do it. Yeah. They kick it to him a lot. They do. Uh, talk about a club that has been a mover and a shaker. Three clubs to go, ladies and gentlemen. Sydney Swans. <laughs> Massive retirements. We know about their retirements, but haven't they gone, let's go. Now, see, this is the difference between St Kilda and the Swans. The Swans go, who's available, but who's quality? They get the quality, not the quantity. So they brought James Jordan across, who was a star for opportunities at the D's. Uh, they got Joel Hamling, who really hasn't fired when he went since he's left the dogs to go over to Fremantle. So I think that's a nice, nice pickup. Back. Yep, premiership back. He'll always have that. They picked this bloke Taylor Adams up. I don't know what he's done recently as well. well. And how many players uh, get get drafted to to New South Wales, then come to Victoria, and then get traded back to New South Wales. I don't know. And then they go, you know what? We need a ruckman. Uh, let's not let's not go for the uh, let's not go for the seven eleven type of ruckman. Let's go for the um, uh, fleur de monde of ruckman <laughs> and um, get Brody Grundy. And within the first few days, we're done. Let's move on. Sydney do it all the time. They're the easiest to deal with. They go out, they get what they need, they bring them in. And they've also still got pick 12, 45, and 55 with 1,822 points, which puts them 11th. So they're not too bad from a player's perspective and a points perspective. Their trade period has been mm, first class, and I'd have to give that a very high rating, hopefully, at the end of uh, the next few days. Well, this is the thing. They've, they've, they've traded in, and they haven't had to spend... Hamling was a free agent, and... He was so poor, so poorly rated, like he's being paid nothing, that um, they, that Frio didn't even get a, a compo pick for him. Um, and Adams is just getting along on the tooth, so they, they got him for a song. Um, and, and Grundy, well, um, Collingwood's still paying part of his wage, so, you know, they, they don't care. And Melbourne got off the hook, so they've saved all that money, so they can go yeah. ahead and get uh, Ben King next year. Absolute win-win, uh, but I don't know that Ben King's going anywhere because he's got a very large contract sitting in front of him right now, and he's just um, letting it marinate a bit, seeing if they'll chuck a couple mm. of snakes on. Um, but Sydney have picked 12, and that will be very sweet in that spot where players slide. Yeah. And have got guys who are rated top 10, and they slide out to 15, where the Swans will end up be, being, you know, picking. Yep. Um, if the Suns' third... Academy player hasn't been bid on them. The Suns will bloody bid on him because that's what they do. Um, but they won't get him. Um, they What they'll do is they'll get a pretty nice player and then they've got their own little Academy fella who could go anywhere from pick 20 to 40 and then they'll match the bid on him. His name's Caden Cleary. Mm -hmm. uh, had a very nice um, time with the, um, with the Allies. And then... Um, at this stage, they've only got those picks, so you'd, you dare say that the, the bid on Cleary would probably clean out those picks. But if they they've got a young fellow whose father was a premiership player for the Swans, um, he's 19, so he uh, did not get father son pick last year. But young fellow with a bit of a hippie name, 
by the name of Indy Kirk. And Indy has been playing VFL for the Swans. He's played for the Allies in the in the national championships and goes pretty well because the Allies won every game they played. And Dominated I, every game they played virtually. I don't think that he'll get drafted in the national draft. I think he'll just slip to the to the, the, the rookie draft and the Swans will get him for nothing. Fair enough. Um, and they've got a they've got a couple of other kids who they probably will that's probably how they'll spend the, you know, that the little, they call it the weeds, you know, the, the last sort of, you know, no one really cares about it. Everyone's looking at the the, the big names in the top 10 or Yeah, the, that whatever. makes sense. They'll just go, you know, but, you know, they've got a great history of picking up that lower end anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, and they're very ruthless when they, when they, when they move out players that this year, they've, they've moved out some top level players. Like, I mean, they, they did lose some players to retirement. So that's, that sucks. But they traded Dylan Stevens, who was, what, pick four? They traded him for nothing. Um, Ryan Clark, they delisted him. Very good player. Yeah, I, I, he, should get up. he should get picked up. Will Gould is a beast of a... I, I, I reckon he'll end up on an AFL list again. Poor old Paddy McCartan, though. I mean, yeah, that's the story. Isn't it? That's their only Achilles, isn't it? The defence. Well, that's what they got. Um, Hamley that's, that, that's why they've... They've, they've sort of, you know, gone hard in, in, in getting um, hamling. <laughs> but I tell you what, though, I reckon there's some defenders out there in free agency still, in, def- in delisted free agency. I mean, I'll go through a couple of them right now. Yeah. Um, you've, you've got um, the there's there's guys like um, Cody Rark from the Western Bulldogs. You know, not, not, I'm not saying they're anything special, but they're, they're around. Bryn Teekle is a, is a Ruckman. He could come back. Um, you've you've got um, that young fella uh, Brody McLaughlin, who the Suns delisted, and uh, he played. He was like equal leading goal kicker yep. in in the uh, in the VFL. Um, you've got Charlie Constable, who was playing in defence, and he's 193 centimetres, so he can play. You know, on your third tall. Um, there's a couple of a few other guys. James Stewart from from the Bombers. Um, these are the kinds of players that. Port should be looking for, and they're not. Tom Wilson from Collingwood, 195 centimetre defender. You just you don't just find them anywhere, you know. Um, so there's 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 four or five names for you. Um, I I don't think Sydney's finished at all. I think that they 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 they've, they've gotten rid of ten players, and they brought in four already. So they've got six more spots to fill. Um, so they're going to fill three of them in the national draft and then three rookie picks. Smart. And they are just a be- smart club, aren't they? They're a smart club. Sorry. This is a club that's not been so smart when it comes to the dollars that they've been spending over the last number of years. West Coast Eagles, lots of retirements, plenty of cap space. They have got a draft hand of one. Skip 22 spots. 23, yeah. 37, 58. But that one will have to become, you'd think, two to three draft picks over this year next year they, they cannot keep one no it would be a, it would be a waste for that club for the position that they're in they've obviously got matt Flynn and tyler brockman have gone across 4468 drafting points at this stage but yeah they're not in a they're not in an exciting position uh, they need yeah. to draft that they need to trade that pick they need to get quantity in because they've got no quality that's all old tim kelly can't be the, the future nick nat's gone do something west coast please otherwise they're going to be just a you know from a team that won a grand final in 2018 i haven't seen a drop this big ever richmond might be the next one but at least they got three flags no they they have to trade out a pick one or they're just not going to get players who are going to pick them up off the bottom of the ladder in the next few years. I mean, they don't need three players to pick him up today. They need three players who, in in three four years, are going to start leading the resurgence yep. back up the ladder. And they need to do it this year, and they need to do it next year, and they need to do it the year after, and rebuild. Yep. And they usually rebuild in five minutes. And I don't see how they can because they're not trading away their best players like they used to do to. To, you know, to keep their currency and not their very best players, although they did um, they did trade away a bloke by the name of Chris Judd. Yeah, um, look what they, they got uh, back in return. They got a bloke who's ended up being their all time leading goal kicker, uh, multiple All Australian Premiership player. They came all right out of that deal, 
and got all the way three or four, uh, four or five more seasons than Judd did. I know, right? And you could argue that the thing that, that, that Carlton needed was a, a tall forward who kicked goals for 15 years. Or and they did, what they didn't need was an old, aging bloke who could, still had a brown mo in him. But you know, remember when he remember when he did that chicken wing tackle? Chicken wing. Oh, then he um, and then it was he, just uh, like oh, yeah, oh, then he elbowed. Oh. Yeah, but don't forget the uh, the elbow to Nick Nat split him open and still, Patrick Cripps lawyer. <laughs> so so you know and yeah the the lawyers or mick gatto was it yep. um the, the the blues have got some good lawyers down there yep. um some of them are um buried in concrete um anyway. <laughs> oh jeez, oh, you know but they're in they're in a world of hurt aren't they west coast like they're going to be this for another two three years easily you know what? You know what I think is a is a is a, is, a, is an indicator of how bad both of those Western Australian teams is, are going to be, is if if the Dockers start picking up the the Eagles delisted players because they're local, and the Eagles start doing the same with the Dockers delisted oh, players. Yeah. And, and like, imagine they actually both started getting good, then they could probably <laughs> trade coaches as well too. No, uh, maybe they could trade Adam Kingsley because I'm amazed that he's still going after this year. Like I know there's been issues with players, etc., but. Ben Simo. I don't know how he can. No, they should have. They should have. No, because they, had, they were going to have to pay him six million dollars to get rid of him, and and they nearly did. They were they were weighing up. They're like, well, they're, we're the richest team in the world or in the country. Yeah. Um, we don't really like Simo, and we're at the bottom of the ladder, and we can't see. They should have just bitten the bullet. They would have got that money back anyway. Because what are they going to lose in sponsorship, membership? Hey mate, can you come coach us? Um, Someone will take it. We don't take any soft cap, so we can only give you a couple of, yes, you know, a couple that's, of. Real that's war. another conversation for another we'll day. We'll give you Will Schofield as your assistant coach, oh, and that's thanks. it. Thanks. Uh, we'll get, get a couple of water boys from the waffle, um, mm-hmm. and and that's how you're going to go for two years, and then we're going to sack you, uh, and then we're going to bring in, you know, the next Mick Moldhouse. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't think that that was a possible thing. Even though they looked at it from every angle, they just realised we're stuck with it. why. Why they ever agreed to it, oh. and the terms and the way that the way the AFL punishes. Tell us why in the comments, please. Someone, why did West Coast go down that route? All right, Western yeah. Bulldogs. Let's go. Yeah. Last team, last yeah. team of our mega trade and drafting uh, setup review. Well, Western Bulldogs. Have a look at this mob. All right, midway table finished ninth this year sitting eighth on the points of 2910 they've got pick five and that pick five is going to think get very very juicy for them they're, they're looking at two things pick five and i got no idea who they want to go with that and then they've got 40 48 53 69 72 they're not going to use any of those they just want to get croft father son absolute gen so they're going to get him they've also got james harms which i think is a a depth backup i don't think he's what he was a couple of years ago. So good on him for getting an opportunity. But the dog, they, they know what they want to do. They want to get a high ender. They want to get Croft. There's our top two. Move on. They they, they like to spin the magnets over over at Witten Noble. So Harms will get a go. Um, they, they they got rid of a few players who they've had in their in their best team. Yeah. So when you, you know, when you move, or well, Josh Bruce retired, um, but you're getting rid of guys like Toby McLean. He's a Premiership player. Uh, Robbie McComb and and um, Mitch Hannon, they're, they're both uh, Footscray, BFL. Hannon, uh, yeah, uh, probably uh, moved on. But even like uh, Baku Baku Gamas, I think I can't pronounce it. Like, Baku, yeah, he was like fitty fitty to maybe stay or go. Like they, they was he going to get a game? Maybe I know. He, he will now. Yeah, he will now. There's Tim O'Brien. You know, he, he was a throw at the stumps that yeah. didn't work out. So they, they you know, they they, they won't, probably won't get rid of many more players. But what they you're quite right. What they want to bring in is um, is the their father son Jordan Croft. But they've they've spent the world to get up into the son's pick five, which will be probably pick six, and they're in the race to get this young bloke by the name of Nick the Wiz oh, Watson. I want him. I mean, I don't know. I like what I saw of him. He he. Um, He's he's he, he's he's one of those little fellows who can play in the guts. You play him as a small forward, put him on the wing, and he'll he'll do stuff because he just wants to get involved. But there's no guarantee that it'll translate. Well, the can big... they play Daniel 
and the Wiz yeah, in two, question. and Cody Waitman in the same team. The question, do they need him? But I don't think they'll get him because I think Hawthorne will get him first. So it's, it's sort of, you know, it's one of those yep. academic things that people are saying Hawthorne will pick Dersma, the other Dersma. Um, but, you know, the Hawks have had their eye on so And Nick we'll Offield might happen. end up that going there towards them as well too. So they might be able to get something there. there there's two other things that will happen for the, the, the Dogs. Um, the, the, they traded the world for the Suns pick, but um, sometimes those things have a way of having a bit of a, a later on knock-on effect. And so those later picks that the, the Bulldogs have got, the, none of them came from the Suns. Mm. And so the Suns can trade picks for them, provided that it's not a pick that the West Coast, that the, the West Bulldogs gave to them. So the Suns automatically say, oh, here's pick 28 for 40 and 48 yep. and build up points and the Dogs get in there. But then again, the Dogs don't want to get it too close. So it might be a pick that, you know, might be something that happens later on um, as things are going is that both clubs are looking at players getting traded after Croft um, they've got a guy by the name I'm going to have to be careful here That's all uh, right. you know Lulu, you know Lululemon yeah of course you do your, your husband your, your, your father I wear them there's a guy I'm here on right now there's a guy by the name of Luamon Luau and sounds I don't like know a, it sounds like a back rower for the uh, Penrith Panthers Panthers <laughs> His name, his name's almost an anagram of Lululemon. Hey, uh, they're Lula very, very Lula. comfortable uh, athletic wear, Lululemons. I'm a big fan. So if they want to give us a sponsorship for next year, mm, I'll look amazing in them. So this fella, um, if he gets picked in the top 40, they can't ma match a bid because he's NGA. Yeah. But if he comes 41 or later... Hello, ladies. They, they've got him and that's all they need. Yeah. They're, they're top pick in the top six or seven. Then they're, they're, they're going to get croft. So yeah, they'll be they'll they'll still be you know moving around the ladder, yep. moving their picks around. And but they've I reckon still got they're Hagen, gonna... they've got Eugle Hagen, they've got Norton on the four hundred year contract. They've still got Lob, they've still got Croft, they've still got Darcy, and they're going to bring this bloke in. Like how much is too much for for the height? But it's great having them. But you're going to be able to use them all on the field at the one time. We saw they tried four tools last year, it didn't work. But now we're going to put in a fifth. Interesting. Yeah, no, you you you're, you're absolutely right. But then again. Um, there's still two days left in the trade period. Anything I don't think they're going to trade Eugle Hagen. And I don't think anyone really wants Lob, but I reckon he'd be for sale just quietly. Um, and they're obviously not going to trade um, the big fella, Nort, astronaut, because he's just been signed until into the 30s. But they, they've, got some, they've got some big fellas that they could say, yeah, that's why they said maybe they weren't going to get Croft. Mm. But I think it's fair to say that Tim English eventually is going to get traded to Western Australia. Yeah. I mean, you know, imagine if if the if the Eagles just came down and said, "All right, we'll give you pick one for Tim English." Oh no, don't do it! I know every Western Bulldog supporter is hearing that from you, Tommy, going. <laughs> but then <laughs> every, all the other teams are going. So it's a guaranteed player for, and then the, the dogs get Harley Reid, <sighs> and the dogs go again, and they're and they're you know. Pushing for fifth place, mm. um, <laughs> pushing for nine. Um, no, but they're, they're, in all seriousness, um, the, the the dogs looking are looking okay. I wonder about their coach. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's another one. That's another tale yeah. for another day because you can't just keep spinning the magnets like he does and yeah. getting results. It's, it hasn't worked. It won't work, and it will never work. Uh, it worked for one year, but did he just get the list at that time? They won it. Pinched a flag. Maybe they got a flag. Can't argue with that. But the you know they were they were probably a goal away from almost pink, getting another one in twenty twenty one. But it's amazing how just lower lower your randomness a bit and just stick to and play players in their positions, not just throw it around for the sake of throwing it around. Link with them. Yep. Hey, uh, tell me. Look, oh, sorry. I, I, I do. I just do have to say to round it off. Um, if if they get that pick five right, mm. you know it could start something for them. Um, if if they somehow manage to get further up the ladder with a, a a very late trade, and this is true for a lot of those teams who are in that sort of position to get a spot. late yep. late player um, that could be a real difference maker. I don't rule. I wouldn't rule it out if we see some really you know really sexy late manoeuvres uh, in the Wednesday. 
So basically the last hour and a half that we've been talking through, every single team could go completely out the window. So just yeah, disregard really anything that really. we have said so far in this mega uh, mega trade slash draft preview review with my point discussion. <laughs> no, no. Everything we've said is, is, is you could you could take it to the bank. There are teams that have already got their strategy. It's very clear and abundant. Yep. Uh, and there are other teams who you, you don't know what their strategy was because they, they can't be in the place they thought they'd be yeah. because it's all just gone to, to poo. Um, but oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with all of the little minutiae of little picks going back and forth. And then we get to draft night and we see the, the, the movers and shakers of, you know, people moving up and down and left and right. I, I love I love that. Uh, what, I, what I don't love is, um, you know, think, things like um, this bloody free agency that we keep on every year, we keep on seeing it happen and mm. it's just it's just garbage. I'm, think, I'm thinking that uh, next time we, we meet up, my friend, we, we might have to melee on uh, a few of the well, other. We are things. going to rumble. Don't you worry about that, mate. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to have a rumble about all that stuff too because I've got plenty in the bank when it comes to trade. The, the draft, the order, everything as well, too. So we'll get into that. But ladies and gentlemen, that is Lace Outs. Three days to go, two days to go, one day to go. Every single team, what they've done, what they're going to do, heading into the trade, heading into the drafts. It's been a massive, massive uh, overall. Will it hit the fan in the last couple of days? We just don't know. But we know some clubs have put the, uh, put the clubs away and they're just going to head into the late November, but there are some who are willing to just go and play the last back nine. They're in contention and they want to kick a winning score. Tommy Roker, absolutely awesome to have you on again. You are the drafting and trade guru. We're going to be, co- we're going to be chatting again with almost a bit of a mock draft in relation to who do you think is going to go where. I know every man his dog's doing a mock draft, but we're going to do it a little bit differently where we're going to go for the realistic needs perspective rather than, well, this guy's going to go here because everybody else has said it. Now, I think that they should go. They will go, but who they should go. And we're going to yeah. get that as well too. Absolutely. So if you haven't done it, like, subscribe, do everything in the chat. Tell us how we went. What do you think about every single team? But more importantly, I'm Chris Pepper, host of Lace Out, and more importantly, the ravishing Tommy Roker joining us. Tommy, I have a simple question for you, my friend. How do you like your trade slash d- uh, draft discussion uh, with a few days to go talk um, on the footy? Well, I uh, I like it lace out. I like it lace out. I like Tommy Roker out. Have a great week. We'll be back soon. And uh, tell everybody about us because we are awesome and so are you.